Hi there, Jake Miller here, and today I'd like to walk you through the process of connecting assignments that you've had students complete in Google Classroom to the awesome educational tool uh, Gubrick, which is created by the Cloud Lab at New Visions for Public Schools. So there's a couple different steps to this, and the first step before you can get to using it in Gubrick, obviously, is to have the assignment in Google Classroom and have students complete it. Following that, then you can move on to getting that assignment into what's called Doctopus. And that's what we're going to cover in today's video. And then in the following video, I'll talk about how to then take it from Doctopus to Gubrix so that you could give uh, student feedback on it. What Gubrix allows you to do is basically a really organized and really uh, full-featured way of giving rubric grades uh, to students. It's even bigger than that, but that's the basics of it. And they've now also layered in the ability to have students reflect with their on their peers performance using rubrics as well which is really awesome and we'll, we'll cover that in upcoming videos so let's talk about how do we get the assignment into Doctopus first because that's a necessary first step so if you look in my Google Classroom you'll see that I have two assignments in here uh, one of which zero of my three fake students have done so I can't do that one uh, because the documents have to be created first the documents don't have to be done but they do have to be at least started, otherwise the documents aren't there for Doctopus to bring in. So they have to be opened by the student, essentially, is it. Um, here is the one that I do want to bring into Doctopus. It's called the This I Believe prompt. You see I have three students, and each of the three have completed it. So the first step to, to getting this into Doctopus is to go to Google Drive in the same account that you're in Classroom in. Mm -hmm. Click on New, and then Sheets. So make a new spreadsheet. You want to give the spreadsheet some name that you'll that that is organizationally uh, makes sense for you. This spreadsheet is really only for your use. It won't go out to the students or anything like that. So, this, so let's I'm going to call it. Maybe this is my first assignment of the year, so maybe I want to put an O1 at the beginning of it to organize. That might be a good idea. O1, and I'm going to call it this. I believe Doctopus. Okay. Once you have your file set up and have given it a name, you want to go to add-ons and you want to get the Doctopus add-on. If you don't already have it, you're going to go to get add-ons. Uh, in the top right is the search box and Doctopus probably is one of the first ones you see there as you can see here. If not, you can search for it. You'll have to do some, some, uh, some allowing of, of certain things uh, before you can start it. Once you get it, a pane should pop up over here on the right. If you're um, starting after you've already got the add-on, you might have to go to add-ons, Doctopus, and then launch. But this normally happens automatically on your first time using it. And you'll see a pane pop up over in there on the right, and it's going to take me, walk me through some steps that I have to follow to ingest this assignment into Doctopus. So first, we have to select what mode we're using it in. Now, it is possible if you're not a Google Classroom user or if you just don't want to use Google Classroom for this to actually create the assignments from here and send it out to students on a roster from here. And this is what Doctopus was originally used for before Google Classroom. But now they've added on the, uh, the ability to ingest a Google Classroom assignment. So that's what we select, ingest a Google Classroom assignment. Down below, you're going to have to select what, what class you're selecting it from. So mine is called Writing Class 1. Next, you're going to have to select the assignment. And you'll see I have two in here. Remember, this one had no documents in it yet, so I'm not selecting that one. I'm selecting the This I Believe prompt. And then I'm going to select ingest assignment to bring this into the spreadsheet. It'll take a few minutes to do it. For me, it won't take too long because there's only three assignments. For you, it might take longer depending on the size of your class. Um, there is an option here to only ingest files that are turned in. I recommend not doing that because they don't have to be turned in just to bring them into Doctopus. You could bring them in Doctopus early. You just want to wait to grade them. So I don't select that. You click ingest assignment. But obviously, there are situations where some people might do that. In this process, you'll see it start filling things into your spreadsheet. And for me, because it's only three kiddos, it happens very quickly. You see it brings in their first name, their last name, their email address, some stuff you could ignore, like a folder key, um, the option to exclude students from this assignment. That's for if you're not using Google Classroom. A file key. Leave these things here. Doctopus needs them. You don't. And the name of the file and a link to the file. A link to the file is really nice for you because that gives you a, a spreadsheet that just lists all those links. It gives you the status of the doc when it was last edited, if it's been turned in. Those things don't automatically refresh every time you come back into Doctopus. So if you want to look at those to see has this kid been working on this, then you click over here on the right at refresh edits and counts and it'll refresh those things there. 
You can see over here on the right, there's also a spot for you to type in grades and a spot for you to type in written feedback. The reason those are here is because if you put your grades and your written feedback in here, you can have it email the students, see the send feedback email, and have it fill in those grades and that written feedback. Now, in this system, if you're using Google Classroom, you may or may not want to use that. The next step is to actually attach that Gubric, the Google rubric, to this assignment so you can start grading it in Gubrics. And I'll cover that in our next video. Now, Dr. Puss, you can see you might just want to use it just as an organizational tool, but it is necessary if you want to use Gubrics. It's not necessary to use Gubrics with Dr. Puss, but you have to use Dr. Puss to get to Gubrics. So tune into the next video to see how we then utilize Gubrics with this.